welcome to today's lecture on NIST instruction set architecture and processor. This is a, this is a second lecture on this topic. So, let us pick up the thread where I left in my last lecture. So, I concluded my la last lecture with this design summary and uh, where I explained whenever you go for single cycle design, there is some performance bottleneck. You can go for designing variable time clock design, but that will make the design very complicated. That is why the reason, that is the reason why we shall start with simple uh, design with a single clock cycle for simplicity reasons and later on I shall discuss about how you can make it multi cycle design and also uh, other complicated things like pipelining, uh, in can, you can incorporate, incorporate instruction level parallelism and various other things. So, in your design you will require two distinct type of components, one is known as data path. another is known as control path, controller you can say, sometimes it is called control path. So, data path specifies the different functional elements that is required for performing uh, computing and controller will perform, will control those functional elements. control the functional elements. So, your processor will require data path and controller. So, these are the two things required. So, let us see what is the data path that is required for our MIPS processor. <coughs> so, this is the basic abstract view of the data path. So, you start from the left side. <coughs> and so, here this shows the most common functions, this is not complete, this is not the complete data path. As we progress in this lecture, we shall see the other components, data path components that is required. So, you are starting with the content of the program counter, program counter is holding the uh, address of the next instruction. That means, the processor will be having a special purpose register known as program counter and program counter will always hold the address of the next instruction. So, whenever you are turning the power on that time it is the responsibility of the operating system to load a proper value in the program counter. Subsequently, whenever uh, you will be uh, doing context switching when you will be doing subroutine call, you will see that program counter has to be uh, loaded with proper values. However, whenever you are executing instructions in a sequential manner, the program counter has to be incremented by 4, because your instruction length is 4 bytes. So, next instruction it will point if you increment the program counter by 4. So, whenever you are executing instruction sequentially one after the other, then everything that the controller needs to do is to increment the program counter by 4. So, that <coughs> program counter will provide the address of the next instruction. So, uh, here is the instruction memory from where the instruction will be fetched and then instruction will be, will be available, instruction as you have seen is a 32 bit instruction and we have discussed about different instruction formats and if it is a, if it performs arithmetic and logical operations, the <coughs> that, that source addresses will be applied directly from the instruction register. It will go to, I mean the operands will be taken from the instruction register and uh, that register, this is the register bank, that means that 32 bit, 32 registers is here, that 32, 32 bit registers are here and you are applying the addresses of these registers. So, operands will be available 
on these two arms of the arithmetic and logic unit. So, arithmetic and logic unit will perform the required operation because that instruction it will also provide the operation to be performed that later on I shall uh, when I shall discuss the control unit that controller will provide you con that instruction will be decoded and that controller will provide you the operation to be performed by the ALU and ALU will perform the operation and uh, result has to be stored in the memory. I mean or into the register, if it is a art type instruction that result will go back to the register. You can see data will be available here and the destination address is again provided by the instruction and result will be stored in the memory. So, if it is if it involves <coughs> that arithmetic and logical operation that means, data manipulation type of instructions, uh, then you, you require the this register bank to supply the operands and also to store the result. So, you can see it is a three port register, three port register means uh, it can you can apply all the three inputs addresses and accordingly two will be used to generate the output values from the two registers and one is for storing the result in a particular register. So, this is the three port register. <coughs> and two will provide the <coughs> address from where you will get the output and third one will be used to store the result. So, that is the destination register address and in case of load and store instructions, however, you will require this data memory. <coughs> the data memory uh, whenever you are performing load, load means you are loading the value from memory into a register. So, in that case that address will be available here, ALU will per compute the effective address as we have seen whenever it is a load type of instruction that address will be generated by the ALU effective address and that address will, will be used to get the data from the memory and that data will go here and instruction will provide in which register data will be stored. Similarly, for store operation again that address will be provided by this ALU and uh, the data will be also available from one of the registers and that data will be stored in the memory location uh, for, for which the address is provided. So, in nutshell this is how different types of instructions are executed with the help of this data path. So, this is the data path you require for performing uh, various arithmetic and logical operation to perform load, to perform store and so on. <coughs> However, you have to extend it and let us see uh, how the different operations are performed. As I have already told, you will require another adder. Why do you require another adder? Because you know that next address has to be generated by adding 4 with the present value of the program counter. So, the program counter value is applied to this adder and 4 is applied to the other arm and the PC plus 4 is applied uh, to the program counter. So, this is for instruction fetching. So, each time you fetch one instruction, the after the instruction is fetched, the new value of the program counter will be loaded, I mean new, new value will be loaded from this uh, output of this adder. So, that is your PC plus 4 will be loaded in this program counter. <coughs> which will provide the address of the next instruction. So, this is for simple instruction fetching from sequential memory. Obviously, this is this does not uh, perform the that uh, branch or jump for that you have to add some more data path that I shall discuss. So, this is for sequential fetching of instructions from the memory. Then <coughs> basic data path for art type instructions. As I was telling, the operands will be available from the instruction, I mean operand addresses, register addresses will be available. Then it will read data from the register and it will apply to the arithmetic and logic unit. It will generate the result, that result will be applied into this write data input and that write register address is again provided by the instruction. We have seen then in, in art type instruction you have got three register addresses. 
two for address of the opponent and third is the destination address of the uh, result. <coughs> and so, all the three are applied here and uh, data will be loaded into this. And whenever you are doing this, uh, you can see the <coughs> signals will be generated by the controller. So, the controller will generate this register write signal and ALU operation signal to this uh, ALU. So, here you require 3 bits assuming that ALU can perform 8 different operations addition, subtraction, multiplication and so on. And so, these signals will be generated by the controller. So, later on we have to add controller to make the design of the processor complete. So, this is on merely the data part. <coughs> Then uh, for load and store instructions as I have already told, it will involve this data memory. So, effective address will be generated for in both cases by reading the data from one of the registers and then that 16 bit data that will be coming uh, as part of this instruction that will be sign extended. I have already explained what do you mean by sign extension. That sign extended data will be added with the content of a register to generate the effective address. That address will be applied to this data memory and this data memory will you know uh, in case of load, it will provide the data here. So, data will be available here and that will be written into the register. So, this is that load typically the value will be loaded into register uh, in, uh, in T1 and this is the offset value is provided by T 2. That means, T 2 register is providing this offset and this is added with this and then you are loading this value in register T 1. Similarly, this is the store word, store word means that content of T 2 which will be available here, that T 2 will be available here which will be written into the memory. So, and that effective address is generated here again by adding the that sign extended value with the content of uh, T2 register. <coughs> so, do not get confused with T1, T2, these are essentially the registers taken from the same 32 bit, the 32, 32 bit registers. Okay. And <coughs> in this particular case, you can see the control signals to be generated by the controller for load and store instructions are given here. Number one is uh, register write, because that is required whenever you are performing load instruction and that ALU operation will be addition and memory write that will be required uh, for load. Similarly, for store uh, sorry that will be required for store and memory memory read will be required for load and for store you will require memory write because both are shown together that is why uh, we have got two signals. One of the two will be generated at a time for load and store. So, <coughs> similarly here uh, register write will be taking place whenever you are performing store uh, load and uh, for store you have to read it and that data will go to will be loaded into this register. So, here the offset value is 16 bit sign immediate field must be sign extended to perform the addition and I have already explained the need for sign extension and you can see here. Uh, how the sign extension is used to generate the effective 32 bit effective address that is required uh, to generate the address for the memory. <coughs> now, we are we have come to another type of instruction that is your branch if equal. So, whenever you are doing branch if equal two things are required. Number one is whether the two register values are same or not, that decision should be known. If they are equal, then branch will take place to a particular location and that address has to be generated. On the other hand, if they are not equal, then of course, the address is already known that is PC plus 4 that is generated with the help of a register. So, <coughs> you can see here you have uh, you have used a 
we have used another adder here which will generate that branch address so so you are you are performing that sign extension that you are adding to the content of pc plus 4 to generate the branch address because uh, that branch address has to be pc plus 4 next address plus that you know with uh, plus some offset that offset will come uh, uh, as part of the instruction and that will be sign extended and added with this uh, this value pc plus 4 so this will be branch address this will be generated i mean this will be loaded whenever branch if, if the branch is taken that means if it is equal and who will decide whether uh, branch will be taken or not so this is that ale will perform subtraction of the two uh, content of two registers so content of the two registers will be you know applied to the ale it will do subtraction and if they are equal result will be zero if they are not equal result will not be zero so depending on that uh, that uh, branch control logic this will be applied to the controller so controller will receive this signal and accordingly it will generate control signal whether depending on whether branch is taken or not taken so you can see uh, the control signals generated by the controller is register write control signal generated is alu operation in this particular case subtraction <coughs> and this output of the ale will go to the branch control logic that is the controller so this is the adding data path for uh, branch if equal instruction so branch if not equal that also i mean the, the same data path with, with the sub debugger increments branch if equal p1 and p2 p1 p2 offset and offset is the is a sign 16 bit immediate field so this is the uh, uh, instruction uh, buq dollar p1 comma dollar p2 comma offset this is the instruction and offset is sign 16 bit immediate field and thus thus uh, must be sign extended in addition we shift uh, left by 2 uh, make it uh, make log it's 0 0 to address the word boundary we have seen that word boundary has to be at the should be multiple of 4 so to that mean multiple of 4 means the least significant bits will be 0 0 and that is what is being done here <coughs> then let us come to the complete data path this is the complete data path where which will perform all the different thing so you we see here we not only require two separate memories this is for reading instruction known as instruction memory you will require data memory you will require the register file in any case then in addition to the arithmetic and logic unit which will perform different computation you require two different two adder two separate adders one is performing that pc plus 4 whenever the branch is unsuccessful this will be loaded into the boson counter on the other hand when the branch is successful then that address is generated by this adder so this adder will be generating that branch address and that will be multiplexed and that the program counter will be loaded by that branch address so you, you see you require in addition to uh, this adder two more adders for the uh, calculation of the uh, two different branch addresses i mean one is for unsuccessful branch another is for successful branch and whether it is successful or unsuccessful that is the, that is decided by the controller and controller will generate a signal to this multiplexer and accordingly either pc plus 4 or the branch address will be loaded into the boson counter <coughs> then you can see here different control signals that is required in this particular case also you will require another multiplexer to this second one because you will be uh, you will be either applying this this value here that sign extended value to generate the address of this uh, or you have to generate the operand value 
I mean the uh, where the operand has to be stored. So, either that uh, either it will come from this sign extended form or it will come from a register. So, you will require a multiplexer that means uh, ALU source, ALU source is a signal which will be generated by the controller and uh, it will it will uh, either it will select this value or the sign extended value that will be applied to the ALU in different situations. And <coughs> uh, this is the signal memory read or memory write depending on load and store and memory to register you can see here again in the you require a multiplexer here either the result is generated by the ALU that has to be loaded into the register or that means in case of uh, you know uh, in case of load in case of load or store from two different sources it will come either it will come from the memory if it is a sto uh, load or if it is a store it will come from here and it will be loaded into the register that is why you will require multiplexer here. So, you can see in addition to uh, two additional adders several multiplexers have been added in the data path. So, these are also data path component multiplexer. So, you can see here one multiplexer here, one multiplexer here, another multiplexer here. So, three multiplexers are added have been added as part of the data path to uh, take care of the load and store and branch instruction. And you know these are the various signals to be generated for R format and operation. The ALU operation is 0000 for AND, 0001 for OR, and uh, 00010 for ADD, 0110 for subtraction. So here we have restricted to AND, OR, ADD, subtract. So these are the four ALU operations, but since it has got four bits, there are uh, apart from these four, you can have other ALU operations which are not shown here for the sake of simplicity. Then for load word, the various control signals to be generated is shown here. Register uh, destination has to be 0, register write has to be 1 because you are loading, ALU source has to be 1 accordingly the multiplexer will be uh, selected path will be selected, then memory read has to be 1, memory write has to be 0 for load and then memory to register has to be 1, that multiplexer control signal has to be 1. Similarly, for store they will be different, uh, this is a material uh, redundant, then uh, register write has to be 0, ALU source has to be 1, memory read has to be 0, uh, memory write has to be 1. So, it will be complement I mean memory read memory write as you can see they will be complement to each other and then memory to register it is irrespective of that uh, redundant in this case then PC source has to be 0. <coughs> then branch if equal you can see all will be 0 and it is independent of this register uh, direction destination and PC source it will be either 0 or 1. So, you can see and here in this case it will be performing subtraction because you know that branch equal operation is performed by subtracting one operand from the other and then checking whether they are equal or not, I mean result is 0 or not. <coughs> so, this is the uh, R format ALU operation codes to be generated. Next we add the control unit that generates write signal for each state element, control signals for each multiplexer. ALU control signal, input to control unit, instruction code and function code. So, so far what I have done, I have shown you the data path and also the various control signals that is required for different types of instructions. Now, we shall add controller. So, on top of the data path, we will require a controller and they two together will be implementing the processor. <coughs> And the control unit is divided into two parts, the main control unit where the uh, where the input is 6 bit opcode. That means, the main control unit will be having uh, 6 bit opcode as the input and output will be all control signals for multiplexers, register write, memory read, 
memory write and and a 2 bit ALU opcode signal. So, this will be the output and this will be the 6 bit opcode that is generated the, that will be the main control unit function with it with the input 6 bit of opcode it will generate this depending on the opcode it will generate various signal and I have already shown you what will be generated there. Then coming to the ALU control unit input is 2 bit ALU op, uh, code signal generated from the main control unit. So, I have seen that 2 bit ALU op code signal is coming from the main control unit because here it will perform those four operations and or addition subtraction. So, these are generated by the uh, by the ALU by the main control unit and which will be applied to the ALU control unit as input and and 6 bit instruction code also will be applied to it as input to the ALU control unit. So, 6 bit op code along with two signals coming from the main control unit will be applied to the control unit of the ALU and accordingly the control unit output the, the 4 bit ALU output signal will be generated by the ALU control unit. So, let us see uh, what are the uh, input and output. So, these are the various input for the main control unit I have already told that there will be 6 in the, these are the 6 bit coming from the off code field which will be applied to the as input to the main control unit and it will generate uh, these signals for uh, uh, these are the inputs for R format all are 0 for load word this is one, one uh, this is the uh, signal for uh, soft uh, store word this is the signal for grand chip equal this is the signal this is the signal and accordingly the output that will be generated by the main control unit is shown here. So, you can see uh, the registered uh, the destination ALU source memory to register control register write control memory to read control these are the control signals generated branch ALU op operation 1 ALU operation 2 these are the control signals to be generated by the main control unit and for different types of instructions R format, load word, store, uh, store word or DQ the different values to be generated by this uh, main control unit is shown here and it can be realized by a simple uh, combination of circuit like this. So, your input is 6 bits coming from the instruction code and it will generate various signal. So, I am not going into the design of this, you can uh, you can find out from this table you know this is the this can this you can use as truth table and using this you can realize this circuit. So, here you have many options, here I have shown how different uh, signals can be generated with the help of gates. Another implementation technique is by using PLA programmable logic array. So, PLA can also be used uh, as the controller. So, PLA will receive input and it will generate control signal. So, uh, <coughs> how, how what will be done and uh, uh, that uh, I mean so that PLA uh, can be used or again uh, this gates can be used either way you will re realize this con main control unit. Now, let us focus on the ALU control unit. So, this ALU control we uh, must describe hardware to compute 4 bit ALU control input given. That means, the ALU the, the it will receive input from two sources as, as I have already shown you. It will receive 2 bit ALU output from this here these are the two ALU output 1, ALU output 0, these two will be applied to the ALU control unit along with the op code, 6 bit op code. So, the 6 bit op code and the uh, ALU control unit, the those inputs will lead to the generation of this 4, four bit ALU control input uh, control signal. So, it will compute the 4 bit ALU control input uh, given, so 2 bit ALU uh, from main control unit and function code from the arithmetic. So, it will describe it using a truth table. So, you can see this is the truth table for that. 
So, you can see for different instruction code, the ALU of code generated by the main control unit is shown here. So, it can be 0, 0, uh, 0, 1, 1, 0. So, 3 values depending on different instruction load, store, branch equal, and R type. So, we have restricted to uh, register type of instruction, load and store, and branch it equal. Obviously, this is not the uh, uh, the complete instruction set. So, we have this restricted to a subset to generate the control unit. <coughs> then instruction operations are shown here, load word, store word, uh, branch equal, additions, add, subtract, and operation, or operation, set on less than R type. And this is the function field, function field that is coming from the, uh, you know, that uh, you may recall that the or the uh, the uh, instruction is having a function field. So, in addition to of code, main of code, there are three register fields and a function field. That means you, you may recall that 6 bit of code, then there are three register fields, then function field, and then here that 6 zip field. So, this function field is used here in this particular case you can see for generating uh, for generating the ALU control signal. So, the ALU control signals uh, which are generated that 4 bit control signals generated are shown here for add it will be 0, 0, 1, 0 for subtraction it will be 0, 1, 1, 0. Uh, for sub uh, and for end operation it will be 0000, zero, zero, zero. for or it will be 0001 zero, zero, and set on less than that is in DEQ it will be 0111. One, one. So, although uh, 4 bits are there, but you can see essentially 1 uh, addition, subtraction and or and only 5 different values are required uh, for the ALU control because either it will perform add, opera add operation or subtract operation or end operation or or operation or set on less than. So, uh, 5 different values are generated although it has got 4 different fields. So, uh, there are 16 possibilities, but 5 are used uh, for the ALU control unit. <coughs> now, uh, this is the ALU of code field this is the function field, same thing I believe the same thing is shown here. So, this is taken this is the same thing represented uh, different fields of this. Now, uh, we have I have put everything together that means that the function the, the, the data path and the control path. So, you have got two controllers main control unit and the ALU control unit all are shown here as you can see. Uh, these are the data paths I have already explained along with the different multiplexer. Then you have got this is the main control unit which is which will generate that registered uh, destination branch, it will generate ultimately that PC source, then it will generate that uh, me memory to memory read signal which will come to uh, this data me that uh, data memory then it has got uh, <coughs> ALU of code, 2 bit will go to the ALU control unit, then memory write signal will go to the data memory, then ALU source that will go to this multiplexer, so that it will come from register or come from this, uh, this particular field uh, depending on that multiplexer will select one of the two and apply it to the ALU. So, this is the main control unit and this is the ALU control unit. So, ALU control unit is taking the 2 bit from the main control unit, 2 bits are shown here and also the instruction that is 0 to 5 main instruction code that is also applied to the ALU control unit that 0 to 5 field and that uh, the 0 to 5 these are this is the field and this is applied to the ALU that 4 bit control signal that is generated is applied to the ALU and ALU uh, may generate you know in case of DEQ uh, another additional signal that is required is a 0 that is the flag bit that is generated 
by the ALU uh, or it will perform that uh, add, add, subtract and or the resultant outputs are either it will be written into the uh, it, it will be written into the register this will how it will be diverted and go to the register. However, for load and store it will involve the terminal. So, you can see this is the uh, complete thing which shows art uh, which implements the art type instruction where uh, the memory two separate memories are shown the DQ instruction uh, scenarios are depicted and this is the complete uh, data path and control signal that is required to implement uh, the subset of functions uh, that I have discussed. Now, addition of the unconditional jump. Uh, earlier we have only added DQ. Now, unconditional jump is also an instruction, important instruction that has to be added and how the, uh, the uh, data path and control unit will be affected is shown here. We now add one more of code to the our to our single cycle design of code uh, to j type and the format of the of code field is uh, 28 to 31 is 2 and remaining 26 low bits is the immediate target address. So, you can see uh, that pseudo direct addressing mode is used here. So, that means whenever it is a unconditional one then that pseudo direct addressing mode that means that 26 bit field and the 6 bit of code field. So, that is being used here uh, and that 26 bit lower order bit field is providing the immediate target address. So, this is used only in case of unconditional jump and the full 32 bit target address is computed by concatenating the upper 4 bit of the PC plus 4. So, here the effective address is generated in this way. <coughs> So, here is your program counter, program counter is 32 bit 0 to 31 and your opcode in this case the instruction format is 6 bit opcode and 26 bit is available that is the immediate target value. So, what is done this value and these 4 bits. So, here you have got 26 bit and uh, you require 4 bits from here. So, 26 bit immediate field and 4 bits for of the PC plus 4 they are concatenated. So, these are these two are concatenated not added. So, these two are concatenated to generate the effective address in case of your unconditional jump. So, this is the address and that will be applied to the memory that will go to the memory instruction memory to generate the effective address. <coughs> and this and uh, you can see here this is your 4 bit this is 26 bit. So, that leaves 4 plus 26 is 32 30 what about the 2 bits the remaining 2 bits has to be 0 0. So, that means the lower order bits will be 0 0, 26 bit will come from here and 4 bit will come from here. So, 26 and 4 bit and that will be the effective address in this particular case. <coughs> so, an additional control line uh, from the main controller will have to be generated to select the new instruction and a 2 bit shifter is also added to get the 2 lower order 0. So, this can be very easily obtained by shifting this 26 bit and uh, to show that is two zero zeros are inserted. Okay. Now, let us look at uh, the final design. So, here is your final design uh, including jump instruction. What are the new things have been added? Number one new thing is you can see another multiplexer has been added. So, we had one multiplexer, now you have got another multiplexer. 
and that multiplexer is provided using is providing the jump address. So by concatenation, you are will it will generate the jump address zero to thirty one. That will be multiplexed and loaded into the program counter. And uh, that is the main thing. Rest of the things we have already included. So you can see here uh, the the those things do not change. You will require the instruction memory. You will require the data memory. You will require the main ALE. You will require two more adders for generating the addresses. Then you will require a, a number of multiplexers. One here. One here. One here. And another two. Another uh, only new is this additional multiplexer, which has which is required for this uh, last jump instruction. So, this is the final design. Uh, the showing the data path and the two controllers that is required for the for the uh, for the uh, you know that for realizing the processor. So, uh, in this lecture, let me summarize what I have discussed in this lecture. I have first introduced to you in two lectures rather, <coughs> in two lectures I have included, I have discussed the NITS instruction set architecture and of course, I have only discussed the a subset of the instruction set architecture of MIPS. So, MIPS is a processor, uh, RISC processor, which uh, has got <coughs> uh, single instruction uh, size 32 bit instruction, with three different formats that is your R type, I type and J type. An R type is used for conventional, you know, uh, ALE operations, addition, subtraction, and or like that. And I type instructions are used for branch if equal. And J type instruction is used for jump. J type format is used for jump. And accordingly, we have seen how the effective address is calculated in different situations. In this particular case, uh, you know that BEQ, that 16 bit offset, 16 bit that is provided as part of the instruction is sign extended and added with a register to generate the effective address. And in case of this jump type instruction, we have seen how uh, this is done uh, by concatenating, concatenating different fields. 4 bit is coming from the PC, 26 bit is coming from the off code uh, from the instruction, and by shifting it by 2 bit, we are getting 2 0 bits. So, that is how the effective ad address is generated whenever the jump type instruction is uh, added. And to incorporate this MIPS IS, to implement this MIPS ISA, we have seen that you require your processor, Pro processor requires, what are the things required? Number, it requires two, two different types of memories. One is for instruction and second one is for data. You will require three, uh, I mean uh, rather one ALE and uh, two adders, two adders and one ALE is required. And by doing that, you can implement all the data path and of course, you will require a number of multiplexers. You will require how many multiplexers? You can see here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 multiplexers. And of course, in addition to 32 bit, 32, 32 bit registers, you require another special purpose register that is program counter. And this is the data path that is required and we have implement the implemented the controller uh, by using two different controllers. Number one is main controller and 
then second is required to we have used one ALU controller. So, main controller and ALU controller together controls the entire data path. Now, before I conclude, let me discuss about the uh, multi cycle implementation. So, this was the single cycle that was used to perform four different things. What were the four different things? Instruction fetch, instruction decode, ALU operation and write back. So, all the four instruction fetch, instruction decode, execution of the instruction and write back all the four were performed in a single cycle in one go using a single clock. Instead of that what you can do you can have four different clocks say you make it multi cycle. So, in one cycle you use you perform instruction fetch, in another cycle you use instruction decode, in another cycle you perform execution and in another cycle you use right back. So, you can see this is your single cycle and this is your multi cycle. So, whenever uh, you go from single cycle to multi cycle obviously, the clock frequency will be higher. So, in this particular case it will be four times that of the single cycle because we have of course, assumed that instruction fetch, instruction decode, instruction execution and write back all of them requires the same time, but in reality they will not be same. So, the again the frequency will be decided by the slowest of the four different operations. In this case for simplicity we have assumed all of them requires the same time. Now, whenever you go for multi cycle, multi -cycle what is the advantage? What is the advantage? Say uh, we have seen a um, single cycle will require so much of hardware, we have already seen that two different types of memory, uh, two one ALU and two adders, and so many multiplexers. Now, whenever you go for multi cycle do you require so much of hardware? Can it be reduced? The answer is yes. How it can be done? Number one is you do not require two separate memories, because we have seen that in two different cycles uh, whenever you will be performing instruction fetch you will not be doing write back. So, you can have a single memory. In fact, earlier in the early years when the computer first uh, I mean processors were designed, they were having a single memory and they are known as uh, Princeton, Princeton architecture. Only subsequently to facilitate pipelining and other things, you require two separate memories. So, if you go for multi cycle of course, not using uh, pipelining then you can have a single memory. So, which is uh, which is uh, done by uh, you know um, von Neumann architecture or Princeton architecture. Second thing is you can reduce some of these other functional units, because you see when you will be doing instruction fetch you will be you will be using you will be using this adder when you will be performing execution you will be using this as this ALU. So, possibly the same ALU can do this addition if you go for multi cycle. Similarly, when it will be calculating the address depending on the bunch this adder also can be performed by this. That means, some of these functional units can be reduced whenever you go for multi cycle implementation. So, uh, however, 
uh, that means the uh, reduce the number of adders the question is what is the disadvantage in this world nothing is one sided it has definitely got some advantage what is the disadvantage is there any disadvantage for going whenever you go from single cycle to multi cycle the disadvantage is that controller will be controller is very complex not only controller is complex you have to address some additional uh, functional units like uh, you know <coughs> multiplexer and other things so your uh, design of the data path and the controller will be very complex whenever you go for multi cycle implementation so with this let me conclude this lecture i have discussed in detail the single cycle implementation of the nist processor and given some overview about multi cycle implementation in my next lecture next next lecture i shall discuss how you can implement pipeline